the government just made some big changes which could be the end of Airbnb in the UK. We actually predicted this on our podcast years ago, but now it's happening. And investors will need to rethink their strategies fast. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the changes that are coming and how they'll affect the property market. But most importantly, I'll explain the opportunity that this is going to create for investors and how you can take advantage of the situation. But before we get into what just happened, let's take a quick look at how we got to this point. And in order to do so, let me introduce Ian, the investor. So Ian was renting out one property in North Yorkshire for years. And up until 2017, he was making decent profits because the government treated Ian like a business owner, which meant he was able to expense any costs associated with his properties, which included the interest on his mortgage. This was great because then he was only paying tax on the actual profit he had left over at the end of the month. In other words, life was good until the government capped the amount of mortgage interest costs that individuals can claim. This meant that Ian was suddenly paying tax on profit that he didn't really have. Now, as you can imagine, he wasn't too happy about this, but even though his tax bill went through the roof, he held out for two years with his long-term rental because he didn't see much of an alternative. Then, during the pandemic, the country went into lockdown and international travel became nightmarishly difficult, which meant people had to swap the Costa Brava for the Costa Bryson. So the staycation industry started booming and Ian noticed new Airbnbs popping up in his picturesque part of Yorkshire every week. And these Airbnbs had a benefit that Ian had lost because holiday lets could still claim their full mortgage costs as an expense. So he jumped on the trend and converted his property into a holiday let. And for Ian, business was booming again. But it wasn't long before people started complaining and articles like this and this and this started to appear. This created a lot of pressure to crack down on holiday lets. And now, the government finally has. So what's actually happening? Well, it looks like Ian's going to find himself back in the same situation as he was a few years ago because his loophole has suddenly been tied shut. From April 2025, it won't matter whether you're letting your property over the short term or the long term. They'll be taxed exactly the same. So if you own an Airbnb like Ian, it means a couple of things. First, your tax bill is probably going to rise. This is because you won't be allowed to expense your full mortgage interest anymore. So your paper profit will go up, and unless you're a basic rate taxpayer, the relief you can claim won't cover it. Second, there may be more tax when you try to sell because various reliefs are being abolished. So selling is less attractive, and so is continuing to operate. And unfortunately, We've just had one of the wettest summers on record. And now that the world is fully open again, people are back off to the Costa Brava. So if you combine that with the tax changes that will reduce profit margins across the board and tip lots of holiday homeowners from profit into loss, in other words, Airbnb in the UK is going to change dramatically. And we can make a fairly decent prediction as to what impact that will have on the wider market because... We've seen this before. Back in 2017, when the major tax changes for long-term lets started to be introduced, people were slow to react. As you saw, it took Ian a whole two years to make the switch from long to short term because some people wanted to wait and see what would happen and others didn't realise the impact until they were actually holding their tax bill in their hand. So at first, not a lot changed. Then all of a sudden, people started selling properties left, right and centre. And I reckon we'll see something similar here. There won't be a mass exodus right away, but over the next few years, we'll see more and more people deciding it's not worth it and getting out. Now, this probably won't be enough to affect property prices at a national level, but it will have an impact in areas where there's a high number of Airbnbs, like Cornwall and York, where we might expect to see a dip in sale and rental prices as more property comes onto the market, which would be welcome news for locals and is kind of the point of this change. But as an investor, you're probably wondering, how can I avoid losing money or how can I even make money out of all of this? Well, if you already have a holiday let, my best advice is to speak to a tax advisor as soon as possible. This will give you enough time to make a decision before the changes come into effect. All businesses are different and it might not make as much of an impact as you fear, but you might decide to sell or to turn the property into a long-term rental. The only way to decide is to know the facts rather than stick your head in the sand so you can make the best decision for your business. And if you're curious about how much you could earn from a long-term property rental, you can download our property deal calculator from the link in the description. But what if you've been thinking about getting into short-term rentals? Well, then you should be careful. Of course, there will still be a market for them, but it'll be harder to make a profit. So you need to run the numbers carefully using conservative assumptions for how many of the weeks of the year you'll have guests given how demand is dropping and taking these new tax changes into account. But I think the real opportunity here is for long-term experienced investors because in property, 
history tends to repeat itself. A few years ago, there was a big craze where casual investors were buying family homes, turned them into shared houses, and renting them out room by room in search of higher profits. This led to a huge oversupply, which meant that newer, inexperienced owners of these multi let who hadn't run the numbers properly or who bought in areas with lower demand started to struggle and sold up. So experienced investors were able to swoop in and buy the properties at a discount, often turning them back into family homes again. And I think the same could happen with holiday lets. People like Ian might start selling up in a hurry, and when they do, there'll be lots of houses available and long-term investors will have the chance to pick up some great deals. But just because someone's keen to sell and is willing to give you what looks like a discount on paper, if you mess up your calculations and forget the hidden costs, you could still end up with a property that costs you more than it makes. So watch this video next where I explain the method that I use to analyze any property deal in two minutes.